Sweden is struggling to accommodate 165,000 people who have applied for asylum there amid the refugee crisis. In times past, Sweden was well known for being one of Europe's most welcoming countries for refugees. But this became a tale when a new government came into power and changed Sweden's migration policy, hardening its receptivity towards migrants and asylum seekers. And like you guessed, this couldn't have been without a reason. So what effects has immigration had on the Swedish economy? And why has the country decided to take a stand against it? Before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. In 2015, a record-breaking 162,877 asylum seekers entered Sweden, which, along with Germany, was the preferred destination for a wave of Syrians, Afghans, and others who came to Europe in search of protection and better lives. It was observed that a large surge of immigrants came with negative socioeconomic consequences. In response, the Swedish government introduced border controls, followed in mid-2016 by a highly restrictive asylum and reunification law, which was a major policy shift for a country that has long prided itself on its generosity in looking after immigrants. Yet, the negative impacts of the high rate of immigration could not be avoided. One major issue that encouraged the Swedish government to create restrictive policies against immigrants was the spread of violent Islamism among Swedish Muslims. More so, it has been reported that there is a widespread worry that there are Muslim organizations in Sweden that reject Swedish laws, customs, and values, with the creation of some highly conservative mosques in Sweden that do preach radical Islamism. Over time, the Swedish Muslim Council, which is the main umbrella organization for Muslim associations and mosques in Sweden, have repeatedly condemned Islamist terrorist attacks and emphasized the importance of legal and social integration into Swedish society. Yet, the issue has persisted, notably influenced by migrant Muslims into the country. At the same time, hate crimes against immigrants, especially young men from non-European Muslim countries, have increased. Reports of hate crimes based on Islamophobia and discrimination based on religion and ethnicity remain a significant social problem in labor recruitment. The rise in the population of asylums has led to a corresponding increase in the country's budget with heavy financial consequences. In 2018, for example, the government presented a 10-year plan to combat the complex issue of segregation by introducing integration policies like other EU countries. The plan singled out five priority areas, housing, education, the labor market, democracy and civil society, and crime. Among the initiatives were a fast track for newly arrived immigrants to enter the labor market and become self-sufficient, and a call for civil society organizations to help immigrants learn about democracy and the importance of voting. But guess what? The plan earmarked 2.2 billion Swedish krona, which is equivalent to $338 million per year for various institutions and organizations at the national, county, and municipal level. This plan was linked to an additional $786 million increase to the police budget for 2018 through 2020. An incredible increase, if you ask me. This was not unnecessary, though, but was due to the increase in gang-related crime and violence, especially the high murder rate in Malmo, which was already a threat to public safety. Yet again, the gangs were made of foreign-born individuals, this occurrence is part of what made the high immigration rate in 2015 and 2016 a crisis, which led to the dramatic shifts in Swedish immigration law and policy that resulted in the famous temporary asylum and family reunification law of 2016. The high number of immigrants in Sweden have also led to a housing crisis. There has no doubt been a shortage of housing nationwide. In fact, more than a third of the nation's families cannot find affordable housing. Now, these families have no choice but to pay more than they can afford for a decent home by cutting back on other necessary expenses like food or health care. Although it is a major crisis for the country's citizens, all Swedish residents are suffering from it. 
In fact, immigrants are more likely than native-born individuals to be cost-burdened, more likely to live in poor or hazardous housing conditions, and more likely to live in situations of overcrowding. Because of the low supply of housing due to increased population, residents, including citizens, have become exposed to unsafe housing conditions such as high lead levels, poor insulation in extreme weather, and pest infestations. For immigrants, especially the newly arrived ones, exploitative landlords simply tell them that the living conditions are the tenant's responsibility to bear. Also, some parts of Sweden lack alternative accessible housing options for those who cannot afford decent homes because immigrants have filled them, causing the Swedish people to opt for unsafe housing which have either direct or indirect risks to healthy development. For example, housing for farm workers is unlikely to have enclosed play areas for their young children, putting them at risk of harm and kidnap. On the part of the immigrants, overcrowding has become an issue. Typically, immigrant families are larger than the average Sweden-born families, and households tend to be a mixture of nuclear and extended family members. With that, it is usually difficult for them to get homes that can accommodate their size, mainly due to limited income or lack of resources. These immigrants are likely to live in situations of overcrowding, which the U.S. Census Bureau defines as having more than one person per room. And in the process of finding adequate housing, large immigrant families try to balance the needs of all family members and household size without considering home quality and neighborhood safety. Interestingly, immigration has also affected the number of workers in the Swedish economy by increasing labor supply in some occupations and industries. This means there are more people looking for jobs. But some people argue that immigration has expanded the demand for workers and therefore created new jobs, giving the example that migrants themselves buy goods and services and increase their demand and that employers may increase production in sectors where migration allows them to employ more people or use more labor-intensive production methods. While this is true, the negative impacts immigrants have on the labor market outweighs the benefits. Even when considering Swedish citizens as a priority population, the fact remains that impacts of migration in the labor market vary depending on the time and types of jobs immigrants get. For instance, a high influx of migrants into high-wage jobs that require long periods of training will have different impacts compared to when they go into low-wage positions. For example, immigrants going into childcare occupations may increase competition for childcare jobs while increasing employment among working women. But in general, Workers in low-skilled occupations in Sweden face more competition from migrants because the skills needed for those jobs are easier to acquire and are less specialized. More so, empirical research on the labor market effects of immigration in Sweden and Europe as a whole have found more negative effects on low-paid workers than on high-paid workers. In fact, Focus on wage effects at the occupational level found that in low-wage service sector jobs, a one percentage point rise in the share of migrants reduced average wages in that occupation by about 0.2%. More interestingly, negative wage effects of immigration are even far worse for resident workers who are migrants themselves. This is largely because the skills of new migrants are likely to be closer substitutes for the skills of migrants already employed in Sweden than for those of Sweden-born workers. For example, Swedish studies have concluded that the main impact of increased immigration from 2015 till now is on the wages of migrants already in the country. Now, Sweden is probably more segregated than any other country in Europe. This is obvious in cities like Göteborga, Malmö, and Stockholm, where the white Swedish population does not live in the same area as the immigrants. More than anything, it shows that immigrants are not welcome anymore. And to discourage potential asylum seekers from coming in, Sweden's Ministry for Migration is working with Swedish missions abroad to communicate the information of its hardening line. This is because troops travel across Europe and from all over the world to cold little Sweden just because they heard about the generous regulations the country has concerning immigration. Unfortunately, the new government was elected, 
among other things, on a mandate to change the regulations, which is why it seems to work with Swedish organizations abroad to spread the new news that immigrants are no longer welcome. No matter how harsh it seems, Sweden's reasons for the change in migration policies are justified. But there are more concrete ways they could go about it to get good results. If you know any of such, do drop it in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you haven't. Until then, where money matters, we'll see you on the next one.